Sure. Um, so I presented at Arvo 2024 in Seattle on the impact of fericimab versus two milligram of flibercept, the impact on heart exudates in patients with diabetic macular edema. This is a post hoc analysis of the Yosemite and Ryan pivotal studies. And heart exudates, I think, are important in a different way, just like macular leakage is important. Number one, I think it can help us get at whether uh, ANG2 has a differential effect in the treatment of our diabetic patients. And two, heart exudates are troublesome. We actually have pretty good therapy for getting rid of fluid on OCT, but the heart exudates uh, often persist. And sometimes when they encroach into the fovea, they can cause permanent vision loss despite resolution of macular edema. Um, so I think having therapies that perhaps uh, work better on heart exudates is a real additional kind of advantage or an additional tool in our toolbox. Sure. So we compared, as, as you may remember, there were three arms in the Yosemite and, and Ryan trials. The control arm was a flibercept two milligrams dosed every uh, eight weeks after a loading period. There was a similar arm for fericimab six milligrams given uh, every eight weeks after a loading period. And then there was um, the kind of treatment extend or variable treatment arm where the dosing of fericimab could be titrated anywhere from four all the way out to 16 weeks. Uh, based on both visual acuity and uh, OCT findings. Obviously, the way, the, uh, the way it was titrated had nothing to do with presence or absence of heart exudates. But we used the Wisconsin Reading Center, which graded all of the color fundus photos, looking at that central ETDRS grid. So the central six, uh, six millimeter circle uh, centered on the fovea and basically graded all of the images at baseline week 16 year one and year two for the presence or absence of heart exudates, of lipid heart exudate. And if there was definite or probable or suspected heart exudates, that counted as yes, heart exudates present. And if there was uh, absence of heart exudates, that was considered you know, heart exudates absent. And if you look across the study, about 80% of patients had heart exudates, lipid heart exudates at baseline. And if you look just overall at that population, the 80% that have heart exudates versus the 20% that don't have heart exudates, we see that although eventually they do well in those first kind of 16 weeks in the loading phase, they actually have slower vision gains and slower OCT, you know, anatomic improvement than their counterparts without uh, heart exudates. So again, kind of striving to get rid of heart exudates, I think is a good thing for a lot of reasons. The, uh, the analysis basically showed that at 16 weeks, if you look at the population, you know, the 80% of patients uh, who had heart exudates, they were well balanced across the three arms of the study. And at 16 weeks, really no difference, no impact, not surprising because we know heart exudates take longer to go away. But if you look at year one and year two, we see about a 10% reduction in the proportion of patients who have no lipid heart exudate in the fericimab treated eyes versus the aflibercept two milligram treated eyes. So this suggests that fericimab over time, over a year or two, does a better job at resolving uh, lipid heart exudates. Well, you know, in the same way that I think macular leakage was interesting. And so when you see an eye with a lot of macular leakage, and by the way, it doesn't always correspond, uh, the fluorescein angiography findings of macular leakage doesn't always correspond with kind of just how much fluid you see on OCT um, with the macular volume. So uh, similarly in those eyes, you see a lot of macular leakage, you might say, hey, let me reach for fericimab because it does a better job at resolving macular leakage. Similarly, uh, I think clinically, when we look in at the slit lamp and indirect ophthalmoscopy, and we see a lot of lipid heart exudate, you know, to me that suggests, hey, this is an eye with a lot of vascular instability and perhaps reaching for fericimab with its dual ANG2 inhibition may be a better choice uh, for those patients.
Sure. So I think the biggest limitation is the fact that this first analysis was done with color fundus photos, and it was a binary decision, basically presence or absence of lipid hard exudates. But we know, you know, like if an eye had, you know, resolution of 90% of its hard exudates, well, that's still a great outcome, but it doesn't really show up in this analysis. So the next wave, we've actually already started this work. There's a little teaser in my presentation at Arvo on this, is actually quantifying in, in nanoliters, the volume of hard exudates in the central six square millimeters, um, and then looking um, at the volume of hard exudates, and if there is there a difference between furosemide versus two milligram of flibercept. And that data is uh, still forthcoming, but look for it at upcoming congresses. Yeah, I mean, the great thing about uh, the Farisimab, you know, clinical trial program is that these were really large studies. Um, you know, we're talking about 1,800 patients in DME, you know, 1,200 patients in AMD, large studies in retinal vein occlusion as well. And so what having a lot of like high quality clinical data does is it allows you the ability to ask and then try to answer I think really interesting and pertinent question. So um, I think it's a great advantage that um, kind of the folks at Roche and Genentech will have is really trying to mine and understand this data. I think we're honestly just probably scratching the surface um, and a lot more is to come.